Today's true crime route is taking us on a road trip to cover the craziest story that I've ever heard about a family down in a small town in Texas. In this small, tight-knit community of Colmes, Neal, Texas, a family feud simmered beneath the surface, eventually erupting into a fatal confrontation that would shock the nation. The story of Kristen Westfall, her brother Cameron, and their parents, Paul and Letha Westfall, is one of bitterness, revenge, and senseless tragic loss. This story takes an improbable turn when the cops realize that something isn't quite right with the entire family after doing a little digging around. But I don't want to spoil it. Let's get into this one. In early 2014, Nathan and Crystal Maddox were approaching their first wedding anniversary. The couple, both in their 30s, had embarked on a new chapter of their lives together, blending their families and building a life filled with love and shared dreams. Nathan Maddox, 35, was known for his strong work ethic and dedication to his family. He was employed at Lufkin Industries, a well-established manufacturing company in East Texas. Nathan's job provided stability and allowed him to support his family, a responsibility he took very seriously. Despite the demands of his work, Nathan always made time for his daughter, Maddie, whom he cherished deeply. Maddie was Nathan's daughter from a previous relationship and was the light of his life. He was deeply committed to being a present and loving father, ensuring that Maddie felt supported and loved despite the complexities of their blended family. Nathan's devotion to his daughter was one of the many qualities that drew Crystal to him, and it played a significant role in their decision to build a life together. Crystal Maddox, 30, was a woman of many talents and passions. As the owner and operator of two businesses, All That Sparkles and Shabby Chicapeak Boutique, she had a flair for creativity and entrepreneurship. Her businesses reflected her love for fashion, beauty, and design, offering a unique blend of products and services that catered to the local community. Additionally, Crystal ran Crystal Maddox Photography, where she captured the beauty of life's moments through her lens. Her work in photography was an extension of her artistic spirit, allowing her to express her creativity in yet another medium. But above all, Crystal's greatest joy and purpose in life was being a mother. She had four children from a previous relationship and she was fiercely dedicated to them. Crystal was known for her creativity in motherhood, often filming her children, making plays for them during Halloween, and finding unique ways to celebrate every moment of their lives. Her children were the center of her world, and she poured all her love and energy into ensuring they had a happy and fulfilling childhood. Crystal's journey to this point had not been without its challenges. Only a few months out of high school, she had married her high school sweetheart and started a family. The young couple had a couple of children together, but their relationship eventually ended in separation. Determined to create a better life for herself and her children, Crystal moved to Lufkin, Texas to start over. In Lufkin, Crystal found a fresh start and threw herself into her work in hair, makeup, and costumes. It was here that she reconnected with an old schoolmate, Nathan Maddox. Their reunion sparked a connection that quickly grew into something deeper. Nathan admired Crystal's dedication to her children and her creative spirit. While Crystal was drawn to Nathan's kindness, his love for his daughter, and his steadfastness as a father. Nathan and Crystal's relationship blossomed, and they soon decided to merge their lives and families. The roots of the tragic Westfall Maddox case can be traced back to the turbulent relationship between Kristen Westfall and Nathan Maddox. Their marriage was marked by frequent conflict and emotional strife, leading to a bitter separation. The couple's divorce was contentious, particularly due to the custody battle over their young daughter, a battle that would lay the foundation for the animosity that followed. Kristen Westfall, deeply attached to her daughter, found herself at odds with Nathan Maddox over how their child should be raised. Nathan, who was determined to be an active presence in his daughter's life, sought joint custody. This was met with strong resistance from Kristen and her family, who viewed Nathan's involvement as an intrusion into their lives. 
the custody battle became a focal point of resentment, intensifying the already strained relations between the two families. After the divorce, Nathan Maddox moved on and eventually remarried. His new wife, Crystal Maddox, brought him much needed stability and happiness, but her presence further fueled the Westfall's resentment. Kristen and her family, particularly her parents Paul and Letha Westfall, viewed Crystal as an interloper, someone who was not only taking Nathan away from them, but also becoming a part of their granddaughter's life. The thought of Crystal having a maternal role in their granddaughter's upbringing was something the Westfalls could not tolerate. By January 18, 2014, the tension between the Westfall family and Nathan Maddox had escalated to a dangerous and irreversible point. The bitterness that had been simmering for years finally reached its boiling point, leading the Westfalls to formulate a plan that would have devastating consequences. The conspiracy was spearheaded by Letha Westfall, the matriarch of the family who harbored deep resentment towards Nathan and Crystal Maddox. Letha, along with her husband Paul Westfall, daughter Kristen Westfall, and son Cameron Westfall became increasingly consumed by the belief that the only way to resolve their conflict with Nathan was to eliminate him and his wife Crystal. The Westfalls believed that by doing so, they could regain control over the granddaughter who was at the center of their feud. The Westfalls meticulously planned their attack, knowing that Nathan and Crystal Maddox would be attending a supervised visitation at the Mount Carmel Baptist Church in Combs Nail, Texas. These visitations were arranged by the court to allow Nathan to see his daughter under the supervision of a neutral party, a system that was supposed to ensure the safety and well-being of all involved. However, for the Westfalls, this visitation provided the perfect opportunity to carry out their deadly scheme. On January 18, 2014, the conflict between the Westfall family and the Maddoxes culminated in a shocking act of violence. Nathan and Crystal Maddox had just finished a supervised visitation with Nathan's daughter at the Mount Carmel Baptist Church in rural Colmes Neal, Texas. Unbeknownst to them, the Westfall family, consisting of Paul, Letha, and Kristen, had been waiting, ready to carry out their deadly plan. Crystal walked out first to receive a fatal bullet head wound. Nathan then ran out after her and was also met with a bullet. While lying on the ground, he was executed with a 12 gauge, ensuring that Nathan, like Crystal, would not survive the attack. The brutal slayings of Nathan and Crystal Maddox immediately sparked a major investigation by law enforcement. The brazenness of the crime, committed in broad daylight at a church, stunned the local community and law enforcement alike. Given the known animosity between the Westfall and Maddox families, the Westfalls quickly became prime suspects. As the evidence mounted, law enforcement intensified their efforts to break the Westfall family's resolve. Interrogations became more frequent and eventually cracks began to appear in their story. Some of the things you have said, I believe. Some of the things you have said also, it's not true, and I know it's not true. In the planning of all this, did they ever get together at home and sit down and put make notes or <clears throat> draw diagrams or? They never once ever. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, he was supposed to say something, but he never did, and never afterwards. The original charge was not capital murder. It was criminal conspiracy, organized criminal activity. We were lucky and they didn't resist when they were when they were confronted with it and stopped and uh, and uh, they went went into custody peacefully and it was night time when we got them stopped and when we got everyone arrested. In an effort to provide a level of protection for his son Cameron, Paul Westfall was the first to confess his involvement in the crime. In a matter of weeks, the investigation culminated in the arrest of Lisa, Paul, Christian, and Cameron Westfall. The family members were charged with a capital offense, with Letha being identified as the mastermind behind the deadly conspiracy. The charges were severe, reflecting the premeditated and cold-blooded nature of the crime. Um, and then um, all, the, all the TV crews were there when they did the perp walk. When, they, when we get them out of the vehicles and walk them into the jail, 
And I think uh, that kind of thing's helpful for the victims' families to see these people in cuffs losing their freedom, knowing that they'll never take another free breath. And uh, it was it was very satisfying. When Rhonda let me know that they had been arrested, and I instantly had a sense of relief, happiness, but then I relived everything and become heartbroken again, that it's real, that you know they're really gone, and now we're having to move forward on this part of their life. I think the hardest realization is to realize, for me, there is no safe place anymore. When your child is killed at the doors of a church, you realize there is no safe place. You know, you, you know your homes are not always safe. You have home invasions all the time, but to be killed on the steps of a church. It definitely takes away your innocence. I did not go to any of the hearings. I, I would not go. Um, I just wasn't able to stand up to it. I commend the family for sitting in there. I really do. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm still angry. I'm still hurt because they embarrassed me. They put me through hell. You know, even going through their estate stuff. Um, I was full power of attorney. People look down on me. You know, we live in a small community. Very small. I know just about 95% of the whole county. And they know me. They know my family. Uh, because we've lived, you know, we've all lived there all of our lives. And uh, for them to look down on me, because I had involvement with the West Falls, it's hard to live up to. I really want to make sure that people understand is, it was not just our family that was violated. The, those crimes were so violent. It violated that whole county. It violated the society. It violated those people that lived there, uh, the people that went to that church. That whole county was offended. I got messages from all over the country from people because I've become a very public figure in, in this, this whole uh, time that uh, people all over were offended, uh, not just hurt at what happened, they were offended at the blatant violence of this crime and that somebody would have the audacity to do something like that at a church, at their own home church, that it was just they were offended. So it was not only our, our family that was violated, but society was violated by this. Kristen was a master manipulator. She knew what to do and what to say to get people to bend to her will, or sometimes even to think that an idea was theirs when it was actually Kristen's. And so she played on their fears. Um, Letha was very close to Maddie, did not want to let Maddie go with anybody. Uh, Letha hesitated to leave Maddie alone at all with anybody else. And so uh, Kristen played on that. Uh, she let Letha know that maybe there is a possibility that, that Nathan will get custody and, and you, won't, uh, you won't have Maddie in your life anymore. Um, I think she did the same thing with, with her father. She played on his uh, his hatred for, for Nathan and manipulated him in that way. It's just bizarre that a whole family was involved in this and the whole family's in prison over it. You know, it's just, they're gone. And they were, they were involved in the church, they were involved in the community, and that's, I mean, the, that, that church was divided over this, this murder because there were some people, that, there's no way those people did this, you know, and, you know, it's just, just bizarre. It's crazy. The aftermath of the brutal slayings of Nathan and Crystal Maddox saw the Westfall family brought to justice for their horrific crimes. In 2015, Letha, Paul, Kristen, and Cameron Westfall faced the consequences of their actions in a series of emotionally charged court proceedings that gripped the community and drew widespread attention. Due to his cooperation and a plea bargain on two counts of tampering with or fabricating physical evidence, Cameron Paul Westfall received a relatively lenient sentence of 10 years in prison. As part of the agreement, he was required to testify against his family if they went to trial. His mother, Letha, pled guilty to capital homicide in the spring of 2016. However, his sister, Kristen, chose to stand trial a few months later. With compelling evidence against her, the jury took eight hours to convict her of capital homicide. Kristen received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Nearly nine months before their father also pled guilty and received the same sentence in May 2017. Today at 25, Cameron is incarcerated at the James J. H. Byrd Jr. Correctional Facility in Huntsville, Texas, where he is expected to remain until his projected release in 2024. 
Christian is currently serving her life sentence at the William P. Hobby unit in unincorporated Falls County, Texas. Facing capital punishment, Letha and Paul Westfall accepted a plea agreement with the district attorney's office. Letha pleaded guilty to engaging in organized criminal activity and was sentenced to life in prison. Now 61 years old, she is incarcerated at the Mountain View unit in Gatesville, Texas, and will be eligible for parole in 2044. Paul Westfall, on the other hand, pleaded guilty to capital homicide and received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. At the age of 64, he is currently serving his sentence at the Smith unit in La Mesa, Texas. Despite the promise of their new beginning, Nathan and Crystal's story would take a tragic turn. Their lives, filled with so much hope and potential, were cut short by the senseless violence that claimed them both. The loss of Nathan and Crystal Maddox left a deep void in the hearts of their loved ones and a lasting impact on the community that knew and cherished them. You'll find another video coming your way soon. Please like and subscribe. Stay ready and be safe out there, people.